What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrail.com. Today we're gonna be checking out this ball mount from Boltproof Hitches. Now this is the extreme variety of theirs, so it's gonna be the most weight capacity you can have on a two inch hitch, but it's not just that, it's gonna be adjustable too. So you can move this all the way up and down and adjust it if your truck's a little bit higher in your trailer, you got a lifted truck, you can get this ball where you need it to do, that way you have a flat toe and you're all good to go. Now I did mention that this is the extreme variation. Usually Bulletproof Hitches puts their ball mounts in three different categories. You have medium duty, heavy duty, and then extreme. So this is gonna be the extreme one like I mentioned. It's gonna have the highest weight capacity and that's gonna be 30,000 pounds. But that's if you're using the two and five sixteenths ball. If you flip this around and use a two inch ball, you're gonna have 12,000 weight capacity. So just keep that in mind, which one you're using. It does change when you go to switch them around, but they're both gonna have the tongue weight of 6,000 pounds. So either way, you're good with that. Now the extreme category has a bunch of different options that go with it. You can get a bunch of different drops and rises with it. So you get from as little as four inch of a drop and as much as a 12 inch drop, or you can get it in an offset like this one where you have four on top and six on bottom. That way you don't have to flip this constantly when you're adjusting the ball. So if you get this set the right way the first time, you can always go up and down with it instead of pulling the whole thing out and putting it back in there. Now, it's also available in a couple different hitch options, but today we're gonna focus on the two inch hitch and no matter which one you get, the weight capacity is gonna be the exact same and the same with the tongue weight. But how easy is it to use? It's actually pretty easy. I like how easily these pins slide in and out. That always doesn't happen. You know, sometimes when you get the different ball mounts, they don't line up perfectly and you have to mess with a little bit where you have to move this part just to get this sort of slide in or kind of rotate this to get it to go in and kind of fight you. This easily just slides in and out every time. So I like that. The pins are also pretty heavy duty too. So they're gonna last you a long time. You don't have to worry about them bending or anything. It's pretty solid. So you have two of those. You pull the clips on the side and then pull the pins out. Then you can flip it around if you wanna use the two inch ball, you can, and then adjust the height where you need it. So let's say, let's put ours right in the middle. You can slide that right back in. The top one and the bottom one. We got our clips and it's that easy. It sure beats having to take it all the way back out of the hitch, flip it around or, you know, some of them have it set up like this, but you gotta loosen it and then flip it and replace the ball. That's a pain. This is way easier, especially if you have multiple trailers and you're doing that all the time. The other thing that I would note is that if you look at the hitch, it doesn't come with a hitch pin, but this locking hitch pin they sell separately. So you can pick that up. That way it locks the ball mount to the hitch and it comes in a couple different kits. You can order just one and use it in the hitch. You can order two or three. And what you would do with three is you could replace these pins with those locking pins. That way you got the ball locked to the ball mount and then the ball mounts locked to the hitch. That way nobody's messing with this. It's not going anywhere. Throw around the word heavy duty when it comes to these bulletproof hitch ball mounts. I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. You can see that it's a solid steel shank. So it's not hollow. So it's all the way in there. So that's gonna be nice and durable when you go to put in your hitch. It also has two different hitch pin holes, and that's so that you can get more of the shank in the hitch, depending on your hitch. So when I go and slide in there, we're gonna slide it to this one instead of the first one, because then more of the shank will be in there, and that just gives you more strength overall when you're doing that heavy duty towing. So we slide it by, line up that second one. You can see how much more of it's in there, so that goes pretty much to the back of the hitch, giving you just lower, more strength for that heavy duty towing, like I was saying. Now, just because you have this though, doesn't mean you can tow the maximum capacity. So make sure you check your hitch and see how much your vehicle can handle before you go lifting something way more than you should. With that solid steel shank, there's these gussets. And these add extra strength and support all the way up and down this offset or your ball mounts. They're all gonna have them. That way, if you are using it at a weird angle, like if you're using it all the way down here or all the way up here, you're not gonna sacrifice any of that strength. It's gonna be just as strong down here as it will be here in the center. So not only does it look heavy duty, I mean, it feels heavy duty. It's heavy when you lift it up, which is good. Our customers have a lot of comments on our site saying that they opened the box and they were impressed right away when they lifted up. They knew that this was gonna last a long time. I mean, you got the solid steel here on the sides where you move the ball mount up and down. So even if you were to have some kind of accident or something, I don't think this would be damaged at all. 
So that means it's going to work with you a long time, which is good because you can kind of invest in it and build on it too. There's a bunch of different accessories on here. So if you get a different kind of trailer or different equipment, you don't have to worry about buying a different ball mount down the line. You just pull these pins out, replace this portion with a pencil or a clevis pin or even shackles you can add. You can even add a step up here on the top that you can step onto to get into your vehicle. So there's plenty of options for this ball mount out there because it's going to be with you a long time and that's good that you can upgrade it and customize it. That way you don't have to buy a bunch of different accessories. You don't want a bunch of 10 of these in the back. You got this one and just the different accessories to swap out whenever you need them. Just to show you, it does move a little bit in the hitch, but that's because I'm pulling on pretty hard. It shouldn't be pulling side to side like that that hard. And there's nothing pushing down on it. If you push down on it with the weight, if you got a trailer hooked up, it's going to be way more quiet than it would be just in the back there. So you might hear it a little bit if you're not towing anything, but I think it'll be nice and steady. I don't think you have any problems. There's not much room for it to move, so it might just go a little bit like that while you're on the road. You probably won't even hear it in the cabin. I mentioned the medium duty, heavy duty, and our extreme duty here. I talked about all three of them with our rider earlier today. You should check out our conversation. So me and Aiden over the last couple of days have been working on these bulletproof hitch ball mounts. And we have them laid out here. They're in three different categories. They come in a bunch of different drops and all that and different hitches, but we, we grouped them up in the main categories. We have the medium one, it's over here. This is gonna be the heavy duty one. And then we have two different versions of the extreme one. So those are the main categories that these come in. Do you know anything about these? Or do you have any thoughts on them so far? Or? What do you mean when you split them into, I mean, I have an idea of what you mean, but when you split out the extreme, what what is extreme duty? Like, I feel like we know heavy and heavy duty, but when you say extreme duty, is that more for the vehicle you're using, for the trailer you're using, or just the yeah, kind of person, the uh, extreme person and you want the best? Yeah, it's the highest weight capacity is what we figured out when going through them. I think they just didn't want to call it light duty, medium duty, heavy duty. So they said medium, heavy, extreme. And extreme sounds cool, let's, let's be honest. But yeah, so that's going to be your heavier weight capacity and heavier tongue weight. I think they have the biggest drops and rises too. Uh, I think that at least on our, our site, the heavy duty right there had the, yeah, had the biggest uh, drop, which was 16 inches. And then all the extreme duty, the highest they went up to was 12 inch drop, which is what that guy right there is. It's huge. Yeah, we put it in the truck, it touches the ground. So <laughs> it doesn't work on this vehicle. We'd have to get Jake's truck. Yeah. So you're going to need something, or you'll have something lifted for sure. Oh, yeah. Because someone who's looking for the extreme duty is someone who I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we have one in a three inch hitch receiver. So basically yep. they have, the, they want the absolute highest capacity to tow pretty much whatever they can find. Right. And that's one thing why the extreme, we have it separated into two categories here. Uh, for all the other ones, like the heavy duty, it comes in a two inch, a two and a half inch, and a three inch variant, and the weight capacity is the same across all of them. Whereas the extreme, the two inch version is rated up to a max of 30,000 for the gross towing weight, and then the two and a half and the three inch version of the extreme is 36,000. So you get a little bump in weight capacity with that one. Mm -hmm. Though there's probably not going to be the option to actually go that high with your truck. or the exactly. That's that's one thing we were kind of pointing out in the video is, you know, just because it's rated this high doesn't mean yeah. you can magically tow that much. <laughs> so I think one of the things about these being rated that high, obviously one thing is, yeah, you can tow as much as you want if the rest of your setup is capable of doing that. Um, but I would say it's also just showing the quality. So if we've tested this to 36K, you know that this thing is going to last and it's going to be sturdy and it's probably not going to rattle as much. And, you know, I think you can trust it more or it feels at least like you can trust it more. Is, oh, yeah. that, is that the impression you got playing around with it too? Like they're heavy. <laughs> so, oh, I yeah. mean, they're really yeah. heavy too. Yeah. Even the customers on the website were saying how impressed they were just open them, pull them out of the box and how heavy do they feel. They're super heavy duty. I don't have 
any doubt that they can handle everything they say they can, even the solid shank on them. It shows me that this is all solid steel here, so you're not going to have any issues with this thing when you go to use it to tow. That and then the gussets on the back, that's what this part's called. It adds more strength all the way down, so wherever you put the ball mount, if you were using the slowest drop or the highest high, it's still going to have that durability and that weight capacity it says it does. So that does take away from uh, some of the hitches that you can put the ball around the backside and store them there instead. You can't do that on this one, but I'm thinking the person that's looking at a bulletproof one wants heavy duty. They don't really care about style as much other than it saying it's bulletproof. Sounds pretty cool. But other than that, I think they're getting it for just function, not style or extra stuff. Yeah, the... Um the only one, the only one that you're supposed to be allowed to actually store in the back is the B and W tow and stow, and I would guess that yeah, that customer is more a loyal B and W customer who really likes the branding, and it's more about kind of the B and W lifestyle as opposed to the rough and tumble, heavy duty. I'm a real tower kind of. Yeah. Guy. How much of that is cast versus welded like i'm assuming the gusset is welded on and the channels welded on but is the shank itself does it is it welded together or is it all cast uh it looks like it's welded well the shank itself looks fine looks like it's welded to these parts here yeah but the shank that's itself it's well yeah, yeah. it's solid okay. do not all of them have a solid shank right i think solid right. The medium one does not. The medium okay. one over here, let me set this down. This one has a hollow shank. Right. And it's still going to be fine for what it's rated for. You're just kind of saving yeah. on material costs. Yeah. And I mentioned that you know, since it's a little bit lighter than the other ones, you're not going to be towing as heavy kind of stuff. You could probably add an anti-rattle on the inside. If it did rattle around a little bit since it's lighter than the other ones, then you can take care of that. Was there a lot of rattle overall? I mean, I know that you're you're taking these two parts, the the ball mount and the actual channel, and you're putting them together. Uh, since it's not a like a single part, is there a lot of rattle? Did you uh, notice? A little bit of movement. We can check out the one that's in the hitch here. We got the offset one. If we didn't mention that at the beginning, there is the offset version. So it's got the lift and the rise on it. So that way you don't have to flip it as much. You can just move this up and down. I think it's a uh, Four inch here and six inch down there, so you can flip it however you want to use it. It does rattle a little bit, but there's also nothing putting any pressure down on there. So I assume when you have right. a trailer down on there, it's going to take out a lot of that movement. But it does move a little bit. The ball moves very little bit, but these pins are really sturdy. I really like those. I say that in the video too, because a lot of these things, it's hard to get your hands in these places. And pull these pins out without scratching the crap out of your hands or pinching them somewhere. I like that this was on the side. Very clear and easy. Just to pop that pin out. Or the clip out, I'm sorry. Then you pull that pin out. And the other thing is, all the I was impressed that all the ones we work with, all the holes are drilled properly. Sometimes I'm used to trying to twist it and you have to fight that pin to push it in there. And I don't want to do that every time when I have to flip this around. These work every time. Really easy to slide in and out. So I was impressed with those little things just because... Of all the bad, rusty ball mounts I've dealt with around here from customers and stuff, that, that sucks. Yeah, how's the finish in there, too? I mean, yeah. that's yeah. the first places it'll start wearing off in the ball. Yeah, I saw online that uh, the customers say after they bought and towed a few times, the ball scratches pretty easily. But again, I think that goes back to who's buying this one. They're, they're not really looking at style. They don't need it shiny looking and fancy. I think they're just using it to tow and it gets scratched, it's gonna get scratched. That's how I was thinking. It looks like it scratched a little bit on the inside here when I moved it up and down, so. Yeah, I mean, it's the nature of the beast. You're gonna have some scratching in there. I do think style-wise, I like the look of the, the matte black a lot more than the gloss myself. But yeah, I it's, agree. It's simple. There's, there's not a lot of like frill to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I like that. Yeah, because the Gen Y one's got a lot going on where they got the like that different hammered finish. And all there. So yeah. like that, I mean, that's a benefit to pulling that out and sliding it in a channel and then adding the pin because you do have to lift this up and move it. But you can only put like you can just put the top pin in and then it goes into place pretty easily. 
and we have lock sets, I think, too, right? The, so yeah. yeah. In the channel. Yep. Did you guys pull those or anything? Or? Yeah, we're using one right now to lock it into the hitch. Uh, and you can get it in kits of one, two, or three. So they'll work to replace those pins as well. We're actually going to shoot that video for the lock kits right after this huddle. Oh, cool. Okay, here's the lock here. The locks are kind of interesting. I had issues with the key. Or I guess not so much the key, but pushing them back into place. You're supposed to be able to just push it right back on there. Let's see if I can get it to do it. And there's this very, very slight click. Like, you could barely hear it. It doesn't push on there as easy as I feel like it should. I don't know what's up with that. Like, you're going to have to sh shove on it just to get it, like... Push it on there. Oh, yeah. It works now in the huddle. Of course it does. Of course. I don't just five. Is this the is this from Bulletproof or is this Infinite Rule? This is from Bulletproof. It is Bulletproof. Okay, cool. I couldn't remember between Bulletproof and Gen Y and all the others who we actually had locks from them for. Right. Um, speaking of Gen Y, since you brought them up too, I think those are going to be two of the most often compared also because if you're looking for hd first of all, if you're looking at being in the hd market and actually towing that much weight but second of all if you're the kind of person who also wants to just look like you can tow that much weight i think you're kind of between bulletproof and and the gen y for a lot of stuff so have you guys played around with the gen y's and kind of gotten a feel for the main default structural differences like the obvious differences do you have an opinion between the two I have limited exposure to the Gen Y, but we did look it up and go mess with them in the store before the huddle so I can compare it. Um, kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, just a lot more going on with the Gen Y. They have the compartments in there, which is fine, I guess, for moving that ball a little bit easier. It also came with the, the pencil attachment that goes in there too, so it's set up to tow like that. So I guess that's what you're looking at with the more heavy duty stuff. Now these do have the accessories, so you can change that. I did like that part, but it looks like Gen Y has that as well. They have the accessories. I kind of like the aspect of getting the ball mount and it being able to adapt with you so you're never going to have the same trailer forever. You might get something else and need a different trailer for it. So you can get those options of the pencil and the clevis mm -hmm. and you can even put a step on both of them they have. You can put on top of them. So I thought that was going to be the big difference but it turns out they have the same kind of accessories for it. Otherwise the thing comes down to the finish and I think those are a lot heavier too, aren't they? Because they're just so much more to them. They have all those compartments in there and stuff. Yeah, they're a lot heavier. They're also going to stick out a little bit further because they have the receivers built in. So the receivers are going to come a little bit further out and then the ball mount's going to come a little bit further out because you have to put it in the receiver. So I think both of those things will have to take into account. You already have a huge truck that takes up however much space you're going to be taking up even more space by leaving that ball mount in, which frankly I would do because they're super, super heavy. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to take it in and out all the time, but all the same thing, I don't hit my shit on it every time I'm walking by either, but I guess it's so big I should be seeing it when I'm walking around the back of the truck. And then if you take it out, you got to have someone to store it in your truck too when it's that big, I guess. Yeah. It takes a lot on the Gen Ys, you could always, if you're afraid of having that extra space there or walking into it, you could always remove the little ball mount insert at least. So you only have the channels sticking out. Yeah. Yeah, to your point, you're still going to have to put it somewhere. Yeah, I guess you're going to move the ball mount. I like that. I think it out more. Because mm -hmm. they'll be able to lower their tailgate. You want to lower the tailgate? Yeah. yeah so it's, it's, uh, oh. It sticks out more. You can a lot of times you can't lower your tailbit gate because of the jack on the trailer, and if you get that extra two or three inches, usually then the tailgate will come down, and you can lower it all the way down without hitting the jack. That makes, that makes sense. sense. So that's one difference there. If it's real tight to the truck, you aren't going to be able to lower your tailgate with the jack on the trailer. I didn't think about that. That's uh, something good for the Gen Ys then. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, oh, cool. I jumped in. I jumped in a little bit late on this meeting. Could, what uh, drop and rise did you say this product was? Uh, there's a lot of different ones. I mean, this one in particular. This one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this one is a four-inch rise and a six-inch drop. This is or, an okay. offset. 
got it on top and bottom, but there's a bunch of different versions for all the different categories. I think we were saying the, was it the heavy duty or the medium duty goes up to a 16 and then, the heavy, yeah. yeah. and then there's a 12 inch, I think is the maximum on the extreme duty. I think yep. that was. Gotcha. So pretty much anything you want, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was actually looking at the, I think the eight and the 10 inch drop for my truck, depending on where I go with my truck in the next couple of years. Cause I tow, but I was also, I think Bob just mentioned in a little bit, I was curious how much how much room you have with the hitch you have in now with the tailgate down because there's times when I'll tow, but I need to put the tailgate down to get something out of the bed of the truck. So I'm always curious how much space there is. Right on it? This one. Ah. Yeah, that's a better angle. <laughs> gotcha. yeah. So even with that four inch rise, it still clears. Yeah. 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 And that's what's nice about the offset. You have even more, I mean, only four inch rise, but you have the drop built in too, depending on what you're telling. Yep. Right. Well, I think it's when safe it's to say small. with a hitch like this, though, you're going to be, you're going to have a truck that's a little bit higher than this one. I think this is, these type of hitches are more for a lifted truck where you have to adjust yeah. down more so than up. And the gusset, the gusset oh. is pretty close to the bumper. It's, it's not too close, is it? No, it's, I'd say it's okay. got like a good three, got three inches. Yeah, it's got a good amount of clearance, even when it's in the rise. Yeah. That's good to see. They said it might interfere with rock tamers, though. Yeah, like if you have accessories, that'll... put uh, rock tamers around there, that might not be enough space for that collar to fit around. Hey, Jay, are there two holes in the shank? Yes. yes. So are you in the farthest out or the farthest in? What was that, Bob? What hole are you in right now with the one that's in the truck? Uh, we're in the one. one yeah. We? We're, we use the one that's closest to the ball in all of them. So there's more of the shank in there. So if you back it out, will it still yeah, it'll, it'll be working it'll, with rock tamers? Yep. It'll give it a little bit more room. So that's the second hole there. Yeah. Helps with all of that stuff we were talking about, except for maybe lowering the tailgate. Yeah, because the ball's like, in that bows out yeah. there. So that gives you a lot more room. The pin has two holes as well. Hmm. For different width pitches, yeah. Yep. Two and a half. Yeah, so on this two inch hitch, both those holes are visible but on bob's hitch the two and a half only the outside one was visible so that's where you'd put the clip in there i'm wondering why the clip in the middle when it's a lock got a lock on the end um because we had to push the cylinder so hard just to get it locked it was nice having that clip in there so it didn't just push the pin out the other side yeah you have to push on it pretty good to get that to snap into place. That and there's less play back and forth now. So if you like kind of wiggle it back and forth, just like. Yeah, if it's for the two, like you've yeah. got two inch and a half without that pin and a two inch, it's just going to slide back and forth. Yeah, so that kind of takes up that play. So can you open the tailgate again, AJ? Very carefully. Yeah, you're going to hit the lip. Yeah. Won't bet my life on it, but truck specific, I guess. Yeah. No, it's clear. no, it clears. Still makes it. Success. Good. So I, I guess one other one other question I have, and we I think I might have remembered when I was actually getting hands on with these when we first brought them on, is the actual hitch ball. Uh, is that pretty easy to move up and down the channel? Is it pretty heavy to keep standard, or is it? Yeah, it moves very smooth. You just pull the pins like that and adjust it wherever you want. Flip it over. Everything's very well machined. So like all yeah. the fitment and everything, we didn't have any problems with pins. We didn't have any problems with the channel. Like it, it was all really well put together. It's good to hear. Are these American made? I believe so, yes. Mm 
And the Gen, the Gen Y Hitch one is American made too. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm about trying, like yeah. the Max Toes and those guys that are, you know, the traditional kind of standard imports with the with the adjustable shank that, yeah, like you said, the machining isn't always the best on or the finish flakes off super easily, that kind of thing. So, But, of course, you don't have to pay nearly as much for it. That's true. Okay. Anything else, anyone? I, you guys have answered all my questions. It was great to see these uh, get installed and, and see how they look. Yeah, they work really well. I was impressed by them. I like how it's kind of no frills and just heavy duty. I, I know if I had a trailer or something, I would definitely use them. Something you can count on. Yeah. Would you use this or would you? I shouldn't say would you use it. Of course, it's a nice product. I guess, would you pay for this product? Or would you probably pay for just the one that'll kind of get you by? Uh, I guess it depends on what I'm towing and what I bought. Like right now, I don't have anything to tow. But if I did, like, I don't know, if I was using a whole bunch, I'd probably, I know better from working here that I should probably invest in something that's going to last rather than buy something that's just going to get me by for a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially when I can customize it. So if I did buy something in a trailer and... I'm like, all right, cool. I can tell with this. I'm getting used to that. Then I'm going to want more toys. So I'm going to buy other stuff. And then I can buy whatever accessories with this. I know I don't have to buy about the 10 different ball mounts to keep in the back of my truck. I can just buy this and have the accessories that I can change on the fly when I need to. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm wondering, like, Matt, I know you've talked about the Bulletproof and the Gen Y and stuff even a couple years ago when we first started with them. And you were kind of excited about them because you have a nice truck and you tow. I mean... Are you the guy who you're going to invest in this kind of product? Or are you the guy who, they're really cool, I'd like to have it, but I'm just going to work with whatever I got? Uh, my personal opinion is I lean heavy towards the Bulletproof more so than other brands, mostly because of uh, the construction. Uh, I like the aspect that they weld the balls in place. Um, mm -hmm. They're not removable. And if you look at the C-channel and then all the brackets on the back, of it, you know, it, it's thick. I mean, it's heavy duty. And for somebody that tows often, but not, you know, every single day or every single week, I think it's an investment, uh, you know, to make sure that what you have there hooked to your trailer is going to last. Um, and a lot of people who have aftermarket lift kits, bigger tires and wheels and trucks, you know, they can jump behind this product because there's such a, an array of different drops and rises. So I, I personally like them. Um, if I were more towing every week or multiple times a week, I might lean heavier towards, you know, another brand, but I like these a lot. What kind of brand would be better for towing all the time? Like, are you looking at something that's easier to use or is there something that you know of that's just heavier duty? Um, yeah, see, the thing is, is I don't tow frequent enough to dance at a hundred percent, but if I were to tow every day, I think it would be, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to think of all the other brands that we carry. I would say, what was the other brand we mentioned earlier that we're, we're directly comparing this to? I think Gen the Gen Y's. Yeah. Gen, Gen Y. There you go. So Gen Y, in my opinion, would be the leader uh, if you're towing frequently, um, mostly because it supports, um, you know, a better ride. Uh, the components are there to make sure it's not a stiff, harsh ride. It, you know, it, it moves with the trailer, you know, less trailer sway, you know, on how it's built. Um, yeah, they're a little bit pricier, but I think you get what you pay for with those, kind of like Bulletproof. You're paying for the heavy-duty aspect, and uh, you get what you pay for with anything like these type of products. So you're talking about, like, the Gen Ys that have the built-in torsion that are actually going to really help reduce right. some of that bouncing and sway. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I would assume most people that are towing frequently are going to be towing at least three to 5,000 pounds regularly, you know, um, maybe more depending on what your business is. Um, but if you're towing like heavy equipment or anything like that and you still have a bumper pull type trailer, um, the Gen Y would be the way to go in my mind. I'll buy into that. Anything else, everyone? It's been it's been a really good discussion. I, I think these these products were uh, 
it's great because they've we've had them on the site for a pretty good amount of time but it's great seeing these installed the way you guys have done it so we appreciate it no problem cool. i guess while matt was talking i was thinking uh if you were to buy a trailer and you were pulling it and you only had one trailer would you still go with something versatile like this? But if I only had like one boat trailer I was pulling, would it be better for me to get something that was just specifically the exact riser drop I needed for the vehicle I had at that time? I mean, I guess I would rather invest in something that can go onto my next vehicle because eventually I'm going to upgrade to something else. But I wonder if there was any detriment to picking one that did have all these options or anything like that. Yeah, I think um, the person who owns a trailer the average person who owns a trailer owns 2.5 trailers. So <laughs> there you go. Um, once you have one, you're probably going to end up with another one because, oh yeah, this is not as hard as I thought it was. It's not as big a deal as I thought it was. And now I need a trailer to do this or that. So um, then that's where the adjustable ball mount comes in really handy. You're not trying to figure out which one's the right one every time and storing them in the truck. So they're handy when you do need them. I guess Another if it was thing to think about too. Sorry, go ahead, Lindsay. I, I'm probably going to say the same thing you are, but you're the actual truck owner, so you go for it. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> what I was going to say is, if you think about it too, a lot of people that uh, tow frequently, you know, normally if it's like a small business, you're going to have multiple vehicles, and if those hitch sizes are the same, you can just change out the ball mount to a different vehicle. And with one like this, where it's so adjustable it can work with multiple vehicles depending on, you know, how high they ride or, you know, the load that they're carrying, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, it just gives you more options when you have uh, the drop and rise like this one we're looking at. That does it for a look at the extreme bulletproof hitch ball mount. I hope this helped.